That's right, baby. New Garen skin means a new Garen video. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I want to show you guys how to dominate on Garen. And even though Garen is the easiest champion in the game, there is a lot of different things that you can do. So I want to show you guys my history first. You know, I played some Garen games like I always do for before making a video. And uh, you can already see which video will likely be coming next. You can already see. But yeah, I tested out a lot of different builds yet again. And... I've come to the conclusion, oh by the way, if you want to skip the build part, there's timestamps in the description to just skip to the gameplay immediately. I have come to the conclusion that Black Cleaver is always going to be your item, okay? So first of all, I want to I wanna talk about this build real quick. This used to be my old build and this used to be the best build. And although it is still good, it is still good, you know, this build is going to make you tankier than the black cleaver build but it's just not worth it the damage that the black cleaver provides you compared to the uh, uh compared to the sunfire edges is just much better after that buff that the black cleaver got you know the five bonus attack damage it's a no-brainer you always go for a black cleaver on garen first so um i've uh, there's like two builds that you can go for on garen first of all the tanky build which is you know the dead man's blade starrix gauge blah 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 whatever you need or you guys know it that damage build this is this is my favorite build but let me tell you how you decide which build to go for the runes are pretty much the same on both builds you know like normally they're pretty much the same yeah as you can see they are the same so you start the black cleaver so in a game you have to look okay um are you dominating the early game like if you're two zero three zero right after your black cleaver that that's the first step to go for the aggressive build the damaging build if you're losing, you never go for this build, okay? If you're losing, you stick to the tanky build. So let's say you're winning. Let's say you're 3-0. Then you have to see, okay, does the enemy have a lot of, like, do I need to be tanky? You know, do I need to be super tanky? Or does my team have tanks? For example, if you have an Alistar support or a Vi jungle or a Wukong jungle or whatever, you know, if you have other tanks in your team and you really believe that you can be going for more damage instead of a full defense build, then you go for this build so if you're snowballing and if you feel like your team doesn't need like a heavy heavy tank because you're still going to be tanky then you go for this build otherwise uh you stick to this build so how does the build go you go for a black cleaver uh boots more often than not you're going to go for a plate steel caps let me tell you about a secret little boot that is insanely good on garen when you go for the other build when you go for this build uh when you go for the aggressive build you get a Yumo's ghost blade and boots of where is it boots of swiftness and oh my god will you be fast as hell with this build but only with this build with the tanky build you never go for boots of swiftness it's like a troll to do so um the plated steel caps is generally going to be what you want <laughs> otherwise mercury threats you know if you need the tenacity mercury threats, you already have your second ability for tenacity that's why i almost never go for tenacity but if you need it and if you need the magic resist go for these boots for the enchantment there's two that you can go for first of all protobelt if you want to be very aggressive with the with the full damage build you always go for protobelt by the way and if you want to be the you know the standard garen you can go for the stone plate to be unkillable um second item is going to be dead man's plate in nine, 90 percent of the games it's going to be dead man's plate because it's going to give you bonus movement speed it's really really good like especially mm -hmm. combined with your first ability amazing item for garen um, second item Starix Gage. If you're against a full attack damage enemy, you can go for more armor. But if you're just against a normal enemy, you go for the Starrix Gage. It's going to make you tankier. It's going to give you a lot of damage as well. You know, the attack damage is really important for Garen. Um, and then here, it's completely situational. You know, you can get a Thormil. You can get a Bramble Fest very early on in the game as well, by the way. If you're laning against a Fiora, make sure you get a Bramble Fest at like, you know, as your very first item. Don't finish the Thormil. Just get Bramble Fest as your first item and you're going to be denying Fiora a lot of healing. So it's completely situational. Like, what am I supposed to tell you guys? You can go for so many different items. Force of Nature, you can go for, you know, you can go for a lot. Randuin's Omen, uh, whatever. About Sunfire Ages, I don't really recommend it later on in the game anymore. Again, I've tried a lot. I just, I just really, it really felt like it doesn't deal quite enough damage in the very late game. Like, to me, it does, Sunfire feels quite weak in the late game. It feels really strong in the early game, and, I mean, it's still strong in the late game, but just not, not worth to buy over other items, in my opinion. Um, okay, about the runes, you go for Grasp of the Undying. This is a no-brainer as well. It's so easy, just build the Grasp of the Undying. 
Um, with the full damage build, you could be thinking about going for Conqueror, but no. Grasp of the Undying is just much better. It's going to make your laning phase very easy to win. Second rune, so I said it many times, I hate the champion rune. I've said it many, many times, but after, like, after giving a try to many different runes, you know, <laughs> champion rune, I give triumph a try, and I give brutal a try, brutal just is not as brutal anymore, guys, if you want to be a real champion, you go for the champion rune, it's going to give you 8% bonus damage in your early game, which really allows you to destroy your matchup in the lane, the only problem though is, if you die, of course you lose damage, but, um, when you go for the tanky garen, you know, you're not going to be fully focused on damaging as much, of course, it sucks if you lose the damage, but like it's it's worth it compensates for the for the buff that you get in the early game, the eight percent bonus damage, especially combined with your first ability and your third ability, deal so much damage. If you're not as confident on your Garen, of course you can go for a brutal. Still, it's not as good anymore. Triumph is more of a team fighting rune. This one is gonna make you weak in the lane matchup, but it's really good in team fights. It allows you to dive in and continuously get heals. For your third rune, there's two. Uh, Two runes that you want to go for. The reason that I'm saying two is because Hunter Titan, I don't recommend on Garen because you already have your second ability. It's kind of a waste. The two runes that you can go for on Garen is first of all, conditioning. If you want, like, if you have a free lane, if you have a very easy matchup in lane and uh, you can just get skill into the late game, get conditioning. It's going to give you a lot of armor and magic resist in the late game. If you have a rough lane or if you really want to make sure you win the lane, if you're like against a poking lane, that's what I should say, then you go for the second wind. And it may sound counterintuitive, but no, it's not. Second wind, like, I know Garen has a passive that heals him up, but second wind is going to heal him up even more. This allows you to easily outrate everyone. Like, it's really, really, it's a really strong rune for Garen, guys. Fourth rune, you go for uh, Pack Hunter or Hunter Genius. Hunter Genius, for if you go for the damaging build, I mean, you can still go for Pack Hunter. It's just, like, you don't need Sweet Tooth as a Garen, right? And pa Pathfinder, meh, meh, you're playing Baron Lane. So just go for the Pack Hunter to get some bonus gold for you and your teammates. For your spells, you go for Flash and Ignite. So enough about the build, let's now get into the gameplay. <clears throat> All right, on to the game plan. This skin looks amazing. Wait, let me let me make my camera a little bigger. This skin looks amazing, though. It's a, it's a really good one. Oh, and I took this particular game for a reason. As you saw, I won most of my Garen games, and I won some of them, like, really hard. But I'm not going to show you guys how I stomp an enemy, you know. I, I'm not making videos to show off how good I am or anything like that. I'm making videos to show... To, teach you guys how to play the game and this one is perfect because a lot of stuff is gonna happen in this game a lot a lot a lot of stuff by the way guys um i have a quick announcement to make and it's not bad news or good news about the giveaway i'm gonna change the giveaway and the way that i'm gonna change it is i'm gonna bring it from 15 skins to 10 skins but if you win you can pick a legendary skin so the way that i used to do it is i used to give away 15 skins uh, but you couldn't pick a legendary skin. Now I'm doing 10 skin giveaway, but you can pick a legendary skin if you win. The reason that I'm doing this is because Wild Rift has a new giveaway system to prevent fraudulent purchase. I can basically only give away two skins per day and I have to wait two weeks after adding someone before I can gift the skin. So I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother doing 15 skins anymore. I'm just gonna give away legendary skins and then 10 of them. So I'm still doing the giveaway. It's just gonna be 10 skins now. He should be dead here. Yep, I dodge it. So I dodge his first ability. No, 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 no way. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 don't way. Ah, okay. That was a beautiful hook by the Darius, you know, I can't take credits from him. He hooked me under the turret, made me take a turret shot, and although I still almost killed him, just... Damn, that was well played, man. He hooked me right under the turret and made me take a turret shot. That's how he killed me, that was amazing. Now I lost one of my champion rune stacks. This is what I mean about the champion rune, you know. More often than not, you're gonna be doing good in your lane, but if you don't do good, you're, mo you're, like, you're more vulnerable to getting snowballed. Because you don't have a rune that skills into the late game, you know, you don't have a triumph, or you don't have a steady brutal that gives you steady damage, no, you have the champion rune. Oh, take a look at how I'm playing against this Darius, by the way, this is very important what I'm doing here, I'm baiting his abilities. Basically, the way that you do it is, you are, oh, this is not good, this is not good. 
Oi, 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 they're diving me, guys. I need to waste as much time as I can. Come on, yes. All right, that I, that's actually good. I made Mundo use ultimate. What was I talking about? Yeah, when you play against a matchup like a Darius, as a Garen, the way that you can like win your lane is you constantly walk in and walk out, but you 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 don't walk in too far. You walk like right at the moment that he cannot hook you. Because what's gonna happen is at some point he's gonna try to hook you, but he's gonna miss it, right? He's gonna miss it because you were right, like right at the edge. So if he misses it, that's when you go in. And when when the Darius tries to hit you with his first ability, you use your first ability to dodge it. Because your first ability gives you bonus movement speed. You can either dodge it by going in or by going out. You know, same as against the Camille. You want to bait Camille's hookshot. You want to bait Camille's second ability. Same as against any matchup when you play Garen. You want to bait these kinds of things. Garen is really good at that. You don't just want to go in like a brain dead player and try to trade with whichever champion there is. Oh, this is not good. Nice. So, like, if imagine if I go into a Darius and try to trade with him normally. I go in. Now, let's see what would happen. Darius does basic attack second ability. You know, he slows me, which means I cannot escape already. Then if I try to escape with my first ability, he hooks me back in. Another basic attack, first ability, basic attack, boom, I'm dead. But if I bait his abilities, look, I'm constantly trying to bait. You see what I'm doing? I'm constantly trying to bait. I'm not going in. Just, But he's not falling for it anymore, as you can see. Ah, he fell for it. There it is. See? And that's when you try to look for, st for a trade. After you've baited an ability... I just baited it and then I go for a trade. See that? It's like, even with these quick little trades, this is ultimately how you're gonna win. Nah, I got hit there, that sucks. This is ultimately how you're gonna win a lane with a Garen. Especially against the Darius, by the way. Oh, there we go again. Because Darius is actually quite a hard matchup. Like, if you screw up once against the Darius as a Garen, you will get punished for it real hard. Like, yeah, he's just gonna hook you in and he can easily kill you. It's so easy for him to kill you. Dari okay, 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 okay. Now I'm gonna ask you guys something. This is gonna be a test your knowledge. So, you see two Baron laners, me and the Darius. We both did a different thing. Darius went straight to the dragon. I pushed out the wave and I'm backporting. Which way is normally gonna be the best way? Well, like, what is, what is, what is gonna be more reliable? my way or his way so let me uh, put it down in the comments pause the video right now and i'll and, and i'll show you what will happen so i'll show you so okay darius is there what does it mean if my team is bad they will fight and they will lose you can see that not all of my teammates are bad they're like kind of baiting the enemy but you can clearly see my team is losing the fight because the darius was there but i am joining the fight now with a black cleaver i am much much stronger than the darius so if the enemy hasn't taken the dragon quite yet, then it's perhaps advantageous for us. Like, you can see now all of the enemies are low, and now we have some sort of an advantage, you know, a, just a little bit of an advantage. Ash is trying to get some kills. There we go. So, Darius's way is right if, if like, if, the, if it's not a good team, because they can rush down the dragon before I'm even there, because I'm pushing out the wave and I'm backporting. So it will force my team in a 4 versus 5 situation. They could force, uh, they could rush the dragon and my team could go in and die. But if my team can waste time, you know, if they can just poke the enemy, not make them do the dragon, and I come with my items, we will guaranteed win the fight. Guaranteed. Like, easily. Ouch. See, that? that's like not the... Uh, it's still a fine trade because I have a black cleaver now. Uh, now I go in on him because, yeah, Kha'Zix is here free kill now you constantly need to look at your map Kha'Zix was there so I go in of course I get the kill like you constantly constantly have to have your eyes on the map right there they take the dragon but I really love how this team didn't get tilted like I absolutely love how the team did not get tilted because enemies got the dragon but what did we get let's take a look at what we got we got a kill on the Darius we got the Rift Herald we get the turret. We get ahead. Like, we get ahead from this. We can kill the Darius as well here. This should be a kill. Ah. Interesting. This should have been a kill if he had gone in a little earlier. I'm not quite sure why Kha'Zix didn't want to go in, but yeah. It's fine. But this is gonna accelerate our lead. Who cares about the dragon if I am almost 2,000 gold ahead in this game? This is why I picked this video, guys. 
As you can see, I'm only three on three, you know, three kills, three deaths. Enemy Darius has two kills and three deaths. So it's like not anything special, right? However, Darius has 4,000 gold and I have 6,000 gold. How did that happen? Remember when the dragon spawned and I told you about Darius moving to the lane and me pushing out the wave? I pushed out the wave, I made him lose 250 gold. Then I bought items and I was able to get two kills for my team. Then, uh, while they were doing the dragon, Darius yet again went to the dragon. I pushed out even more waves, got the turret, and we even killed the Darius after he came back. So that's how I got ahead. And now what am I doing? I'm freezing the lane. I'm freezing the lane, because why wouldn't I? In a situation like this, you can freeze the lane. Let me tell you the problem though of freezing a lane. And I don't want you guys to freeze the lane in the, in the wrong situation. The thing that the Darius can do now is he can rotate, right? Because he has no pressure in his lane. He can rotate freely. Like he can help his team get some kills. So that is the big danger that you have from freezing a lane. However, I'm like, look at how much gold I'm making him lose right now. This is devastating for him. Like I'm nearly level 10. And he's level 8. Again, like this is not even a game where, where it looks like I'm dominating. But I am dominating. And that's the beauty of this game. And that's the beauty of this video as well. It doesn't look like I'm dominating. But I am absolutely dominating this game in my lane. I'm completely outplaying the enemy by wave management. This is very important. The wave management, guys. Knowing when to freeze. Knowing when to push. Okay? So now I'm pushing out, because the reason that I'm pushing out is because my team put the Rift Herald in the top lane, and I see the Darius right there, so what am I doing? I'm applying pressure on the bot lane tower as well. I saw that my team wanted to push, so there was no real reason for me to freeze the lane. As you can see, he's losing even more farm now. I pushed the minion wave, minion wave under its turret, Darius was busy in the, in the other side of the map, he's gonna lose even more farm. And I am even more farmed up. Diana is coming, I of course looked at the map, boom, boom. Nah, can I kill her? Flash over the wall, there we go. Five enemies, no one can kill me. Ha ha ha. Wow, that actually hurts. Misfortune. So, um, who do you focus with your ultimate? That's, that's a good question, right? Um, when you go for the full damage build, your ultimate is going to absolutely destroy the enemy. But when you go for the tankier build, which I'm going for right now, your ultimate is still going to do a lot of damage, but of course not quite as much. By the way, I made a video on the full damage Garen, uh, video, uh, full damage Garen build. Just look up Hell's Devil Garen and check my recent Garen video. That's the video where I did the full damage build. So let's take a look at this. Come on! Oh, I was stunned for so long. Here you can see that Mercury threats could have actually been a better idea in this game potentially. Leona stunned me for so long. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Another thing to keep in mind with Dari uh, with Garen is you have a black cleaver. And there is one ability that fully utilizes the black cleaver. Which is your third ability guys. Your third ability allows you to spin around and it deals, it deals like two ticks of damage per second. I think it's even more. Two and a half or something. So what is it going to do? It's going to shred the armor of the enemy so insanely fast. So the way that you want to position yourself in a teamfight as a Garen... Even if you're using your stone plate enchant, just hit as many enemies as you can with that third ability. You're gonna be shredding all of their armors, especially the tanks, and you're gonna allow your team to do way more damage. So make sure, make sure you hit as many enemies as you can with that third ability because you have a black cleaver. You're gonna be shredding all of their armor. Look at that, like, look at how many ticks of physical damage it deals. You're gonna be shredding so much armor. Yeah, he's dead here. I just ult him and he's dead. Yeah, there it is. Like, a champion like Mundo has no chance against the Garen. You know, when he gets to a low amount of HP, all you have to do is ignite him. Because as a Garen, you always have ignite, of course. And with an ignite, he cannot heal up and you're just gonna kill him. It's so funny. Yeah, and now I get a Bramble Fast because they do have a Mundo. And Darius heals as well, so I'm just getting a Bramble Fast just to deny that healing. And I'm not gonna finish off the Thormo, as you can see. I'm just getting a Bramble Fast. And now I'm going to go for the Starrick's Gage, because you don't really need to finish the Thormill up until you're... Jesus Christ. It's the bell that's right here. One second. I just asked whether or not my father would open the door. 
Otherwise, I would have quickly opened the door. Damn, I got destroyed there. Wow. With this build, you cannot solo carry, right? Like, you're not supposed to solo carry. What did I do? Wait. Ah. One second. <sighs> My cable was stuck, guys. Sorry. <laughs> With th this is like a build that you have to tank for your team, and of course apply that black cleaver effect. That's what this build is all about. So that's how you have to play it. You cannot just go in, especially not against a Darius, because Darius is just gonna get free stacks on you, because you're not gonna deal enough damage. Like you're. Oh, there we go on the window. Ultimate and he's dead. Yep, there it is. You're just not gonna do enough damage on your own. So it's generally not worth to engage on your own. Okay? Unless you can escape very easily, but normally you don't want to just go one versus five without your entire team backing you up. If your team backs you up, of course that's the win condition of Garen. So then you can do it, right? This is not looking too good for us. I don't, like I it's questionable. Do I want to dive? Do I not want to dive? Here you can see, you know, it's just not not quite worth. And with this team, it's especially good for me to apply the Black Clear stacks because we have an Ash and she deals a lot of damage. Like, she went for the damaging build. She went for the Bla Blade of the Rune King build and Infinity Edge and stuff like that. So, um, I just need to shred their armor and Ash should be able to carry. She should be able to do good. Keep in mind, by the way, um, you're going to be shredding their armor for like six seconds. So... You know, it's, it's a long duration. You're going to be shredding it for a really long duration. Wait, it's not... Yeah, my mic is still working. Would have been disastrous if my mic wasn't working. <laughs> uh, come on. I still haven't fixed my cables yet because I came back from vacation. I, need, I really need to do that. Why am I being so lazy? Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm Grandmaster now too, by the way. Uh, I'm pretty deep into the Grandmaster rank yet again. Like, I'm gonna... Let me, let, me, let me give you guys a quick little rant about the ranked system right now. As you guys may know, I'm a consistent challenger player in every single season. Except for this season. Let me tell you why. So, anyone that is challenger right now, anyone, like every single one... I'm, I'm, you know, wh whoever tells you he's not, he's lying. Or it's like an insane pro player has been abusing 5-man queue. You know, every YouTuber, every whatever, every pro player, everyone that says, I'm challenger, blah, 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 abusing 5-man queue. And I don't want to do that. Um, I, don't, I don't really like the concept of it. I just want to play solo, duo, trio queue, because it's more fun. And, like, I could reach challenger if I wanted to, but it's not worth the effort. Like, why would I go into a 5-man queue just on, only to reach challenger, just so I can show off that I reached challenger? I mean, you guys know that I'm already good at the game, and uh, why, would I, why would I do that? Like, I really hope that they're gonna fix the 5-man queue issue for next season, so I can properly start the rank again. So, right now, I'm just casually chilling in the Grandmaster rank. You know, if I want, I need, like, two, 300 LP to reach challenger. But I'm not gonna do it, like, who cares? Who cares about Challenger if everyone plays 5-man queue anyways? At least that's what happens in EU. Like, you literally have people with, like, 1800 LP. Like, are you kidding me? 1800 LP, constantly playing 5-man queue, constantly abusing 5-man queue, being up against diamond players? Like, come on, man. Like, I I'm not gonna do that. That's not even, like, the problem is that's not even gonna give me good videos either, because what is fun about watching a Challenger team beating a diamond team? I don't see the fun of it. I just do content creation and I know the system is screwed right now. That's why, you know, that's why that's why I just don't do it this season. So, yeah. If anyone wanted to ask, that's the answer. Let's take a look at this here. Ooh, our Ash has died. Even though their Darius is dead, we really cannot take a fight because Ash is our main damage. Like I'm shredding their armor for the Ash to deal the damage mostly. Hmm, this sucks. What do we do here? Yeah, if they do the Baron, we should have engaged. If they don't do the Baron, we just back off, wait for the Ash. Because Ash is our most important champion, and uh, is our most important champion. She has the most damage. Even though she's not fat, you have to identify who are the big damage dealers. Like, Zed is an assassin. Okay, sure, that's fine, but Zed is not going to carry a team fight. Kha'Zix is an assassin. Brand is our support, so he doesn't quite have enough damage. Ash is our big ADC. She needs to carry it again. Well, of course, we're all carrying together, but she needs to provide the damage per second to us. So, 
you really like you you should never fight a four versus four like that when if an enemy darius dies and if your ash dies and you know your team doesn't have damage you never want to fight that fight oh they're sweeping it out enemies are catching out our ash let's see what i'm doing i'm yeah so i was already saying it's a bit weird that i'm pushing the mid lane I wanted to push it to get the mid lane tower, but then I decided, okay, I need to help my team because I thought that my team would do a full engage. So I went back to my team. Damn. Yeah, our Ash died yet again. She's not positioning carefully. Like, it's really, this is a really rough situation for us right now. The only thing we could possibly do is to just poke them over the wall and then go in. As you can see, they are scared to go in. Use the stone plate, use the stone plate! I used the stone plate a bit too late. Oh, nice. Look at that. I just killed the Mundo. No way. My, my, my team is losing. Of course we lose the fight. I mean, of course we lose the fight here. Because we don't have damage. So let's take a look at what happens here. All of the enemies are low. I go in. Remember that I have a black cleaver. Take a look at the death timer. Ash is coming. I knew this as well. What am I doing? Of course I'm not going to let the enemy team escape as easily. Look at this. All of them are here. I die. But look at what happens. All of the enemies have 25% less armor. And Ash absolutely slices through them like a, like a hot knife through butter. I applied the butter on the enemy. And Ash sliced right through it. This is another mindset that you need to have, right? If one of your teammates is spawning and the enemies are low, it can be worth to kind of suicide in the game. And kill yourself, get the enemies even lower, and especially with the Black Cleaver, shred their armor as well. So the so the teammate that spawns is going to kill all of them, especially if it's an Ash, guys. So there you saw, even though I died, it was the perfect play for me to make, you know. It, like, if I didn't go in there, all of them would be alive. And now, look, I'm saying rush it. I'm saying rush the dragon. I'm selling my boots, selling my item. I'm literally just getting a teleport boots and we're going to rush it. This is a desperation play. Why am I doing a desperation play like this? Because the enemies just have generally have a stronger composition than us. So we kind of have to go for it. So let's take a look at what happens. I'm going on the moon though. He actually flashes over. Okay. Yeah, we got it. So imagine if we didn't got it. Okay. Let's now imagine we did not get the Elder Dragon. What would have happened? If we did not get the Elder Dragon, instead of going back, like instead of me going back, I would have all in the enemy. Like if we didn't get the Elder Dragon, we would have all in the enemy and very likely we would have killed all of them. And then even if they get the Elder Dragon, we will finish the game. So in a situation like that, where you're in a five versus two and it's a, like it's 20 minutes into the game, you, like, it's a good way to, to start the Elder Dragon, especially if your team is, has the weaker composition. We started the Elder Dragon, we got it, but if we didn't get it, we would have still finished the fight very likely as a win. Because we had already killed two enemies before the Elder Dragon was even taken. So, um, um, that is why, like, if they took the Elder Dragon, I would have followed my teammates and we would have probably finished the game. And if we didn't, it was a nice try, whatever. Then we probably lose the game. But now... We got the Elder Dragon. Enemies have three dragons, but we have the Elder Dragon, guys. I'm trying to think of what item to get, by the way, here. It's really hard to decide. I think I went for a Force of Nature. Yeah, went for a Force of Nature. Now, it changes. Like, with the Elder Dragon, of course, you can kind of be a bit more aggressive. Oh, my God. Boom! I went on the moon, though, as you can see. Look at this. Like... I'm never dying. Yeah, we just win. We just win the game. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's take a look at how we finish the game. Because it's all fun and stuff to watch, right? <clears throat> yeah. In the game. Let's take a look at how let's take a look at how much damage I tanked, by the way. That's also a funny thing. Because as a Garen, you want to be tanking up a lot of damage, right? So let's take a look at how much damage I tanked, how much damage I dealt, and everything like that. Come on. I was playing solo queue by the way. As you can see, yeah, I'm Grandmaster right now. So that's pretty nice, I guess. 
Uh, I tanked 35,000 damage. Enemy Mundo tanked 43,000 damage. Jesus Christ, I didn't even realize. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this new Garen video. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.